In civil trials to determine damages for personal injury, the most dramatic point, moment, in the proceedings is when the plaintiff, the one who has been injured, shows the judge and the jury the injuries that he or she has endured. This showing often occurs through the medium of photographs taken shortly after the accident or sometimes with expert medical testimony from a doctor. But in some cases, the plaintiff, him or herself, in the courtroom shows his or her scars, the marks of the injury that he or she has endured. All of the plaintiff's anger and pain culminate in this moment. And the scars, the signs of being injured, so exhibited, stand as a silent accusation against the defendant. You have done this to me, and you must pay. If the defendant is in fact responsible, and if he or she has anything like a conscience, it must be a devastating moment to come face to face with the consequences of your negligence in so public a forum. How different the showing of Jesus' wounds is. Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, after appearing to his apostles, immediately shows them his wounds he shows them the marks of his crucifixion. He does this not to accuse the apostles, even though they were certainly blameworthy, blameworthy for abandoning Jesus at his hour of need. He does not confront them in anger, demanding that they pay for what they did, for what they failed to do. Instead, he comes to them to reconcile them to himself. He comes to them to offer them his peace. All of us, in ways visible, and or invisible have been wounded and injured in our lives. Very often, these injuries, again visible or invisible, are a source of bitterness for us. They are monuments, reminders of the way we have been hurt. They are reminders of the people who have hurt us. And we brood on those injuries and are often filled with resentment. Some years ago, I read a memoir of a Vietnam veteran in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the larger battles in that war. And this veteran had been a Marine who had fought at the Battle of Quezon, and he, is, he was wounded in that battle. He recovered shortly after, but in the memoir he recounts that on damp days, kind of like this, he can feel the ache of that old wound. And when he feels that ache, all of the hard and painful memories of that war come flooding back to him. Hatred of the enemy 
that hurt him. Resentment at the people in our own country who spat upon him when he came home. Frustration and disbelief at the politicians who presided over a war they knew they couldn't win. How differently Jesus bears his wounds. For him, they are not monuments of bitterness. For Jesus, the marks of his crucifixion are portals of mercy. They are windows through which the light of God's love shines into our world. They are windows into a new world, a new creation, into which we are invited. Today, along with the apostles, along with St. Thomas, we are invited to gaze into the wounds of Jesus and to invite the love and mercy that flows through them to heal the bitterness that so often festers in our own wounds. In civil trials, to admit that you are responsible for another person's injury is to stand guilty and liable. It's to be crushed with paying damages. But with Jesus, the consequence of admitting that we are responsible for rejecting him, for living as if he weren't real, are different. Those, those consequences are different. When we take ownership of that, when we declare ourselves guilty, when we admit and confess our sin, we are set free. We are set free. We, along with the apostles, become witnesses to that love that sin and death cannot conquer. We are made new by the wounds of Jesus, by the love that flows through them, through the sacrament of reconciliation. Our guilt and our sins are washed away. And we are drawn in to the life of Jesus, the life of mercy, which makes all things new.